Dobby here, and today we have a new episode in the Art Review series. And today we'll be checking out the work of 77. I'm not sure what this means, but I found this guy through ArtStation. Thankfully, he was recommended in the community page. And he has a very interesting style. Oh, by the way, I found his profile picture, um, and I think it's pretty buff. I'm assuming that's actually him, but very interesting. I think he's a good representation of how um, artists... You know, should be at least sh should be at least somewhat fit because we tend to you know stay at home a lot or in our office like we're very secluded oftentimes and this can lead to a lot of like sedentary lifestyles so it's nice seeing like fit artists and just to mention a couple of artists that are kind of like seven seven uh, what comes to mind to me are two artists uh, my input whoa i believe is a from europe or something like eastern europe I think, who knows, if I recall correctly. And also like his like 7-7 seven, seven works or art also reminds me of Sang Delon because of the, where is it? <laughs> like the forms are very fluid and very fit. And uh, it's, it, he's kind of like a combination of both. Although the thing that separates him from like Sang Delon or my input woe is his style. It's very graphical in nature. Um, you'll see this kind of rendering and a lot of splash art for like League of Legends or those kinds of games. Um, I'm not I'm not really a gamer, but you can tell like the popular games they they tend to have this animated slash graphical look where where there's not a lot of texture. I mean, it makes sense because it doesn't make sense to have that much texture in these types of characters. It can be overwhelming because it's already like really skewed and animated. But I really like it. And what I've noticed is that overall, I think the main, he tends to use the lasso tool a lot for the, like in the beginning, you, you can see the, the line sketch. It's a very light pencil sketch, jotting down the major shapes, silhouettes. But the, from there, I think it's mostly like the lasso tool. Sometimes you'll see more direct kind of painting or um, rendering, but the most common thing so far in his recent work is his use of the, the lasso tool. For example, this one is very graphical in nature and there's a lot of value, like a lot of like very dynamic shapes within like the major silhouette and there's a lot of a good solid value range. And again, it's very, very graphical. Like it's not very blended. Um, like I don't see a lot of mixer brush use or blending tools use. It's very straight to the point. So in a way it has a gouache like feel. Again, look, look at how the lasso tool was used here. Um, I do think these were done in Photoshop, although in one of his pieces, I remember seeing that he used GIMP or something for some of his older works, which is very cool because GIMP is like, it's not normally a, an art. It's kind of like Photoshop, it, the free version anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting seeing GIMP being used. And now this one's actually interesting because it's like a full illustration. There's a close up of this. Well. I think it's somewhere. It's a close-up shot. And again, look at the way the hands were done. Um, at this point, you don't really see the uh, the lines anymore. It's just a bunch of shapes and it's more finished in a way. I really like the, re the rendering of these, what, folds? Or these scuffles? I'm not sure what these are called, but like floral types of uh, thingies. <laughs> I mean, the hair, by the way, reminds me of another, like, the the, the, uh, the Japanese chick. I think I reviewed one of her works or something. Well, did I? Like, I mentioned her work before. Yo, something. She, she, she's a very popular, like, pop dog Japanese artist. And it's very common in, like, anime to really play with the hair. Um, and it's almost like its own art. Like, even if you separate, like, the character, the hair can carry itself. Um, in a very abstract way, obviously, because it doesn't make sense to not, to, to not have that, to not fuck, to not have the head and body, but it, it, you see a lot of fluid shapes, basically, and I think it's very cool. Now, this one is more of a storyboard. You can tell the, the very graphical lasso tool was used, um, but it looks legit. It looks nice. Um, no textures, just shapes after shapes major shapes and then more shapes within those major or initial silhouettes. And I think it's a great way to save time, although I think it takes time. There is a learning curve 
um, to using the, the lasso tool. But it looks good. It carries itself well. And it doesn't even have to be fully exact all the time. There's a bit of slight rendering, rendering perhaps here, like blending, but it's hard to see. Like it's mostly shapes, you know. It has a direct like gouache-esque approach. Animated field. There's a game where it's a white chick with blue hair or something. <laughs> and it has the same kind of style. It's very interesting. It reminds me of the, the cutout filter in Photoshop. But look at how the main silhouette is super clear. Um, even the silhouette itself. If, if everything was black, it would still be somewhat interesting. Um, but obviously, if you add more detail, add more shapes within those shapes, it's going to look really cool. Obviously, the feet, which I'm very proud of. Now, this one, I do see a lot of soft brushes being used. So it's more 3D realistic in a way where there are a lot of gradients, right? So it's not like this one where it's more sharper, where you can see the shape after shape after shape. This one is more smoother and it does have that more 3D look. Even the hair is rendered the same way. It reminds me of a lot of editorial illustrations where it's a bit more vector-like, like flat, like this one. But in some illustrations or editorial stuff, you'll see th this kind of rendering where it's more... Where you see way more gradients being used, way more soft brushes. Now this one is kind of a mix of both. For the costume, for the leggings maybe. Or this detail anyway for the, uh, the these armored things. It's more like uh, the shapey stuff. But for the body and the face, way more soft brushes being used. And it looks so like even if it's not fully right, um, because of that rendering style, it makes it look more cool. Like even the hand, like is that accurate? I don't think so. Um, but you, you get the major gist of it. Like even the, the value of it, of this glove, it's like two values, mostly orange and then purple. Complementary colors, I believe. And then some extra value ranges here. Just a suggestion of um, the fingers. So it's there's a bit of impressionism happening here. Um, even with the wings, you can tell that like the lasso tool was very direct and roughly used. Like it, it's not very exact. The hair reminds me a lot of uh, AI art. Despite your opinions, I mean, obviously the whole um, copyright thing is an issue. But if you look at the way the style is being used for the hair, at least for the more good looking types of AI prompted art, kind of has this vibe and it looks nice, I think. Again with the feet, um, Sang Dylan esque <laughs> It's just nice, you know, it, it, it's a fan service a bit. Now the face is very animated. It's interesting because the face don't always look the same. Slight differences here and there. Uh, very expressive. But I feel like he's way more cautious with the face because if you fuck one thing up, I'm sorry, if you mess one thing up, it's it can ruin the whole piece. So you have to be... You have to learn how to really draw. Wait, is the eye off a bit? Kinda. But it's good enough. Is it? It's kind of pointing down a bit. You know what I mean? But it, it mostly carries and I like it. So. Back shot. Again, lasso tool. This one is way more. So I guess his work overall is very vibrant. Mostly character designs or character concepts. This one definitely reminds me of my input well, especially the facial proportions and the body, the th super thin waist, um, exaggerated like uh, lower body. I mean, I like how the knees are done here, even the back of the knees. Wow. The way the legs and pretty much everything else is rendered does remind me a lot of my input well. Very fluid graffiti kind of style or forms or line work. Um, or edges. If you look at the way the the bunny ears and then the 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 arms, it seems like there's a flow to it. Like it goes back and forth, like waves in the ocean, right? Ocean, ocean. Fuck. Um, you you'll see more of the the lasso tool. In the beginning, you can see the line work, very rough line work, and then um, added with the lasso tool shadows. After that. So, it, it still reads from afar. 
I've seen processes processes or art like painting processes where you start with the line work, the very uh, the line sketch or rough line sketch, and then after that you focus on the shadows. And the reason why is because if you have strong shadows, even if you don't have color, it can still if it still reads in the shadow well, even if you add color or if you paint over it in grayscale, it will still look good. So you want to make sure you establish the the shadows first after the the, uh, the line sketch, or at least that's a common approach. Again, more lasso tool use. Very creative. I can see the line sketch here, the beginning one or the initial one. And then maybe some painted brush strokes within that silhouette or within that selection. And in a way, there's not a lot of rendering involved. I think more time was spent actually focusing on like the gesture of the piece, getting like the main pose right. And, and then everything else is just... Um, now this one's a bit more rendered, I think. You can tell there's a bit more blending happening here. But for the torso, um, it has a gouache look where it's uh, rendered layer by layer. Um, where it's not a smooth gradation, it's more of a like step-like gradation. Step, 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 right? Step, step, step. Uh, meaning it's not smooth, basically. Um, now here you can actually, it's different, it's, uh, the lasso tool was used for the hair, but this a bit more rendering maybe. I love how the belly button was done, very smooth. And for stuff like this, it shows you that you don't need ink work, you can just start or use the initial sketch and then if something goes wrong, you can just paint over it or um, erase an edge or something. So you don't you can skip the whole inking part of the the process. Because once you have the pose established, you can see the pose in the your pencil strokes, even if it's messy, like you can see it. So you don't really need like a finished ink, unless it's your style, obviously. This one's again more graphical, um, but this one is one of my favorites. It's way more 3D-esque, and I think it's because of the way it's rendered. I love how there's a bit of glow here. It really helps separate this thigh from the, the calves. I see. So she's kind of like a cat. Um, I love those hands. Very gestural. And guess what? I can see an outline of the whole silhouette. Um, I think my input woe does the same thing. And another comic artist called Adam Hughes is also known for adding this Art Nouveau style. It's common in Art Nouveau art where you bolden the, the edge of the, the entire figure or subject. So there is that, but also the hair is done graphically where you can see the step-by-step -step, um, clear shapes of uh, the forms or of the hair. But for the face and the body, way more smooth rendering style where it's a bunch of soft brushes and gradients. And I'm sure there's way more lighting stuff involved here. I like how this leg is being pushed back. So the value here gets lighter as you go further away. Um, helps with the, the depth, adding depth to your piece. I would have made the shadow here dark, but obviously I'm not really good with lighting stuff. But it kind of makes sense. You know, it's more saturated. It's a saturated shadow. So that's interesting. Um, I like the face again. And I love how the, the shoulder lighting here was. And look at this light edge, this, sar this sharp edge. Like you can tell it's a shoulder, but it's super like small, almost unnoticeable, but it, it does help to not make it look weird. You know, it really makes it look like a shoulder. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I like this um ribbon. And yeah, very nice, very smooth. Left the feet again. Look at how it's rendered. Like it's not even that exact. It almost feels like it's chunky in a way, but it, you can tell the gist of it via the. It, in a way, as much as it's very constrained, not very constrained, but it's, it has a gestural silhouette used uh, or done with a lasso tool, so it has that graphical look to it. The way it's rendered within seems somewhat impressionistic, right? It doesn't have to be exact. Which I like. And you can just call it like your style too. <laughs> to cope. 
Uh, because it, it, it still works anyway, so I don't see what the issue is. Um, even the way the hands are simplified, like uh, suggested, um, you don't have to be as exact. Whenever I think of Impressionism, I think of really, like impressions obviously, but more painterly stuff, but I think 7-7. Seven, seven, at least that's the, the username, art station username. Um, it shows you that you can be somewhat impressionistic with this kind of style. Now this one is hardly, it's a bit more exact, but not really that exact, right? Like you can tell like the major shapes are there, but now this one maybe it is a bit, a bit it's a bit more. If fuck, even the nails of the feet. Uh, of the toes rather. Wow. Nice shadow here. Long nails. I like it. Look at the way the hands are super exaggerated here. You can tell it was it was done with the, the lasso tool. And maybe the blending options was turned on and then you hit strokes or stroke to create this bold feature. I think that's how it works. Or you draw everything and then you put it all in under one folder or under one group in Photoshop and then you do the whole blending options with the stroke on. Now how do you color that line work? That, that, that stroke? Because it's not just one color, like here it's purple and then here it's cyan so maybe you can extract that overall line work eventually, who knows. So eventually you have to try it out yourself. Interesting. But yeah, very consistent style, even even if sometimes it's more blended softly or more graphically or even with these line sketches, it still feels like his work. So I'm really happy I found this artist and hopefully you enjoy his work too. I will link all of the links in the description below and I'll see you in the next art review. Bye!